right because he was a prick. He didn't try hard and he treated everybody like they were morons and below him. Also, I'm still befuddled by the amount of people that want a guy in year one to operate the same as a guy on year 40. It blows my mind that it's just, you can say once you're at Notre Dame, you got to be expected to win and everything. You can say that all you want. And it's a tough guy argument. And on the surface, it's true. But you also know it's not reality. You can't, I, I say it all you want on paper. It's true. In theory, I agree with you in practicality. It doesn't go that way. It doesn't go that way. So, whatever. <clears throat> and the other thing is, if BK ever did the 10-man on the field, he, he'd be getting crushed week after week. His 10-man on the field was losing to Tulsa and then telling you to get used to it afterwards. Like, if we want to do this, we could do this. There was no Twitter then. There was no Twitter then, but I would have roasted him every day forever. I, I, like that was kind of his 10 man on the field is messing up Tulsa and then getting in there and having the balls to tell you to get used to it. He made the mistake, lost to Tulsa, and then got up there and told you to get used to it. So I just, you can't expect <clears throat> a guy in year one or two to be as polished as a guy in year 35 or 40. It's unrealistic. You could say once you're at Notre Dame, you got to win and it doesn't matter any of those details. I get all that, but it's just not reality. But I do think there's something too. I do think there's something too. The idea. Oh, geez, here we go. Crying belly. It's pathetic to see this channel cower in fear. The mere thought of a bad Texas and AM team and then cry when people say ND is irrelevant. Oh boy. Here's the deal. If you are actually listening to what I've been saying and not just creating your, your own angles for clickbait, you would see that what I've been saying repeatedly, including Saturday night, was. <clears throat> Oh my God. What I've been saying is I am not afraid of Texas A&M, the team. I am not afraid of their talent. I am concerned about Notre Dame in a moment that is that big. Crying, can we separate the two? Are you with me? Are you able to understand what I'm telling you? I am not afraid of Texas A&M's players. Oh, I'm worried they're going to beat us up or whatever. No. I am concerned about a moment this big where Notre Dame's failed in it my entire life. Separate the two. Separate the two things. Or under, use your brain. Understand it. Crying's always negative about Notre Dame, negative on Freeman, negative on everything. Well, if your theme here is to always lean to the negative side, you should be on my side and understand what the hell I'm telling you that. That's your thing. Every single thing I say positive about Notre Dame, you're saying negative. Every time I say something good about the staff or about Freeman, you go negative. That is your angle is the negative glass half empty on all of this shit. So then you should be on my side and fully understand the Texas A&M concern. Be consistent, crying. You're all negative. Then you should totally understand why I'm concerned about A&M. And for the 50th time, it isn't their talent. It's the totality of what that moment's going to be that I've seen Notre Dame fail in my entire life.
Use your brain and separate it. I'm not scared of their players man-to-man. Notre Dame's failed in this big of a moment my entire life. That's what I'm afraid of. Pat, if Freeman loses to AM, what do you think is going to happen to Freeman? I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that means. What's going to happen to Freeman? He's going to try better the next week. Like, I literally, that's what it means. He's going to try harder the next week, and I'm going to be miserable, and you guys are all going to tell me I'm an idiot because I like a coach that lost to Texas A&M on the road. That's what's going to happen. But I don't know what that question means at a bigger scale. What if what if he what do you think they're gonna do? Kick him out of the team plane and tell him to get a taxi? That's just not gonna happen. It's just that's just not gonna happen. I went on this rant last week. I think I even put it on Patreon or something. What if he goes nine and three or whatever? If Freeman goes 9-3 and this year, what's going to happen? I know what's going to happen. I am going to yell a lot. You're going to yell a lot. Everybody's going to say I'm dumb for liking Freeman. And then you know what's going to happen? They're going to rack it up again and try next year and try not to lose three games. (laughs) And again, uh, here's the other thing too. And this goes all the way back. This goes all the way back. You got to tell me why. Kelly, with almost 40 years of experience, got away with non-elite results for year after year after year after year, treated people like crap, talked down to you and the fans and the media and everybody year after year. He did that. And everybody was telling me on this show, half the people were telling me, John, this is as good as it gets, best since Lou, this is Notre Dame, he's he's winning 10, 11 games, even undefeated, even if we get blown out in the playoff, don't worry about it, it's better than anything we've had since Lou, John, you're ungrateful, you know how many emails I got calling me an asshole that I was ungrateful for Kelly And you don't know how good you have it. And this is as good as it gets now. You got to take this. And it's the best since Lou. You have no appreciation. All of that. People carried all that water for Kelly when he never won one bowl game. Anybody cares about it. Notre Dame. People carried water for him year over year over year over year. Marcus Freeman comes in here. And in two years, he's got to be perfect. I can't understand why the standard changed. I can't understand why the standard changed. And you can't argue. Kelly could get away with all that and talk down to you. And everybody seemed okay with it. And then the new guys here that has no experience and suddenly the standard is perfection or you're fired. Why wasn't Kelly held to that? He had over a decade and couldn't win one bowl game anybody's proud of. But Freeman, and that's fine. We just kept doing it year after year after year. Keep doing the same. Year after year after year. Keep doing the same shit. Make me lose my fucking mind. Year after year after year. Keep doing the same thing. Get no results. Year after year after year. And Kelly went in there and just told you, this is what it is here. They just accept it year after year after year. No good results. No good results. No good results. Nothing different. No trophies in a case anybody cares about ever. And he got away with it forever. Now Freeman's here and he's got to be perfect. Year one or year two or we ride him out of town. I don't understand. And on that, I'm done.